Hi guys, this is Dr. Pankaj from Shri Netra Lab. I am going to do one case today which is a penetrating keratoplasty following a post infectious keratitis. I am planning a full thickness keratoplasty in this case. As you can see, I am entering with a 23 gauge side port and injecting a viscoelastic substance in the anterior chamber to make eyeball more firm which will make my definition a bit easier procedure and more accurate also. Once I have formed the anterior chamber with a viscoelastic, I am going to use this 35 year old donor tissue which was kept in optisol media for last 48 hours and I am going to use it now. You can see it is a very healthy tissue right now. I have stabilized the globe with left hand and going to do the trephination with the right hand. As you can see I am going to do trephination in only one direction that is clockwise direction and once I feel that the anterior chamber is entered, I, am, I have stopped and I am injecting a viscoelastic substance to form the anterior chamber again. Just take care that you have made the definition 360 degree with the same depth so that while cutting with the rest of the area with scissors it becomes easier and the margins are quite sharp. Which the first step which I have modified by injecting a viscoelastic substance in the anterior chamber it makes sure that your depth of definition is good in all directions and gives you the good margins rest of the area with the scissors i usually use a small scissor you can either way use a left and right handed scissors specially made for this purpose i have tried that one too but my comfort zone is with the small scissors for this purpose please note the angle of a scissor which is exactly perpendicular to the margins and which prevent the slopy margins which can be troublesome for a graft or junction and will induce unnecessary astigmatism. The donor tissue 7.5 mm and host size is 7 mm. I have placed the graft in place. You can see the anterior chamber is quite well formed. Look, I usually mark with 8 tooth marker after this so that I can get a good orientation of sutures. I usually start my suturing with uh, 12 o'clock sutures. You can use specially made two tooth forceps for this purpose, which I sometimes use. It gives a good stable graft and prevent the cyclo rotation of a graft. I usually complete first 12 o'clock, then 6 o'clock, then 3 o'clock, and then 9 o'clock sutures. Once these four sutures are taken, the anterior chamber is usually formed. If you get that, means your craft size and the host size is very correct. Taking suture with patience is very important. All the sutures are taken nearly 80 to 90 percent of a depth. You can notice as I have complete my four sutures, the anterior chamber is quite well formed. For first four sutures, I usually keep viscoelastic material in the anterior chamber and then wash it off and form the anterior chamber with BSS and a air bubble. This air bubble will act as a intraoperative keratometer for me, which will guide me to take the sutures and decide the tension of a suture while I am tying the sutures. In between sutures, 
I usually keep for me the interior chamber with bases that will help me to take a suture which are of good tension and of proper orientation try to take the sutures as perpendicular possible as possible to the craft cross junction follow the rule that you always tie diagonally opposite sutures first that is first 12 o'clock 6 o'clock 3 o'clock 9 o'clock then intermittent sutures for fifth followed by sixth followed by seventh and followed by eighth five and six are diagonally opposite seven and eight are again diagonally opposite sutures by using this technique again and again in the same manner you will notice that your suturing has become good and the astigmatism component is under control air bubble at the end of a surgery which is very regular circular and which shows that the tension on all sutures is quite good Thank you very much for watching with patience.